So topic today is tune collector oscillator. This is from class 12 physics. The chapter is semiconductors and it is towards the end of the chapter. Now this is the circuit for a tune collector oscillator. I will explain it in two ways. First I will explain it briefly then I will explain it in details. Now see in this tune collector oscillator this is the LC circuit. So this is the oscillator. This is connected to the collector of a transistor. And this transistor is used as an amplifier. This coil and this coil are owned over the same core. So any change in magnetic flux in this coil will induce a voltage in this coil. So what happens is when we have oscillations here a part of it gets fed back to the input of the transistor and the transistor amplifies it again a part of it gets fed back to the input of the transistor and this process continues so this way in a tuned collector oscillator we have a transistor amplifier we have a tuned circuit which is connected to the collector and we use inductive coupling that is we use the principle of mutual induction so this is the tune collector oscillator in brief now this will produce a wave like this where the amplitude will remain constant okay the frequency of this oscillation is we know this is the LC circuit so this will be 1 by twice pi root over LC. Now, one question may come to your mind that to produce a wave like this, why do you need a complicated circuit like this? We have learned earlier that if we connect a capacitor and an inductor in parallel, which we call a LC oscillator, this produces this type of a wave then the question is, if this can produce this type of a wave, which we have learned earlier, then why do we need a complicated circuit like this? The answer to this question is, though this simple LC circuit can produce a wave like this, in practice what will happen is, that is in real life, what will happen is, the amplitude of the wave will go on decreasing and eventually it will die out. Okay? But in many situations, like say in radio transmitters, in TV transmitters, we need a carrier wave where the amplitude should remain constant. So in those type of situations, a simple LC circuit is not sufficient. We need a circuit like this. Okay, this will produce a wave with constant amplitude indefinitely. Clear? Now this is a tuned collector oscillator in brief. If you want, you can memorize this circuit. Then in the exam when it comes, you can draw this circuit. But if you want to learn how this circuit actually works in details and why we need a circuit like this, then you have to watch till the end of this video. I'll be explaining in detail why we need a circuit like this to produce a wave like this. And if you watch the video till the end, you will realize how to draw this circuit. That will help you to memorize this circuit easily and you will not forget it for a long time. So that way it will save you a lot of time in your preparation for exam. So let's go to the detailed explanation of this. See, we have learned earlier that a capacitor and an inductor connected in parallel gives us an oscillator. The frequency of this oscillation is 1 by twice pi root over LC. The wave produced by this is like this. Now this waveform that we had learned earlier is actually a theoretical waveform. Theoretically, in the sense, we had assumed that there will be no loss of energy. Then we will get this type of wave with constant amplitude. 
But in real life, what happens is some energy will be lost when this oscillates. So due to the loss of energy, the amplitude of this will go on decreasing and eventually the wave will die out. But as I have said before, in some situations, we need a wave of constant amplitude. Okay? So this is the problem here. Now for the solution of this problem, let's go to another topic. See, we have learned earlier that a transistor can be used as a switch or as an amplifier. Now if you take a transistor amplifier, say this is a transistor amplifier Now in the transistor amplifier, we have an input side and we have an output side. And we have an output side. Now, we know if we give an input like this here, then, then, the output is amplified, so we get an output like this. Let's say the gain here is 10. Now, we also know that as long as we give the input here, we will get the output here. And as soon as we stop giving the input here, the output will stop. Okay? Now, the engineers have designed a way to give a part of this output to the input. So this is called feedback. Giving a part of the input output, giving a part of the output to the input is called feedback. So this way if we give the part of the output to the input then we don't make this what will happen is say we are giving 10% of the output to the input this is called feedback so we are feeding back 10% of the output to the input now what will happen say if 10% of the output goes here it gets amplified by 10 it gets amplified 10 times so again becomes 100 again 10 person comes here gets amplified by 10 times again becomes 100 again 10 person comes here so this continues indefinitely that means once we start it by some method this loop will continue indefinitely and we will take the output from here okay so this is called a transistor with a feedback circuit and this is called feedback circuit or this is called a feedback network so we give the feedback through a network okay now this feedback network can be designed in different ways that is we can use different type of circuits to make this feedback network one of the techniques is it's called inductive coupling. Here we use the principle of mutual inductance. So you remember that in an earlier chapter we had learned about mutual inductance. That is one of the techniques used for designing a feedback network. In our syllabus, we have inductive coupling, so I will restrict my discussions to inductive coupling only. Okay? So what happens is, we have a LC oscillator, simple LC oscillator. With that, we will combine a transistor with a feedback network, and we will be using inductive coupling. All combined together will give us the real-life oscillator. Okay? Now comes the actual circuit. I had shown you the complete circuit right at the beginning. Now let's learn how to draw it. 
If you learn how to draw it this way, you'll remember it for life. So first what you do is, you first draw the transistor amplifier with its biasing. So see, this is a base emitter, so this should be forward biased. This is collector base, so this should be reverse biased. Then we put a switch here. Okay? So for simplicity, in this circuit, we are not drawing the resistances. Okay? Now, what you do is, you rub this off, then you insert the LC circuit. So you put the capacitor on this side and draw the inductor on this side. So this is C, this is L. Okay? Now, this is the common core in the sense on this core, this coil is wound. So you draw it like this. Then you draw a small coil here. Then this should come to the input of the transistor. So you bring it here, you join it here, you rub this off, then you join this. Okay? Now to take the output, you draw a coil here. So this is the output side. See, this is a complex circuit. Now, what happens is, when we switch this on, our oscillations take place in this LC circuit. So that oscillation induces some voltage on this coil due to mutual inductance. So for this is fed to the input of the transistor. So transistor amplifies it. Again, it goes here. So again, we have the feedback. So this is the feedback portion of the transistor. This is the amplifier portion of the transistor. So this is the LC circuit. Clear? Now see, this LC circuit is also called the tune circuit as you know. This is connected to the collector of the transistor. So this is called tune collector oscillator. Clear? So before I end, let me add something more. This is one way of making a real life oscillator. There is another type of oscillator that is called tune base oscillator. So let me teach you what is tune base oscillator. So instead of collector, I will write tune base oscillator. Since now you are clear about tune collector oscillator, you will find tune base oscillator simple. See, what you do first, you again draw the transistor with its biasing. So this is the transistor with its biasing as before. Okay? Now what we will do is this time for a tune based oscillator we will put the LC circuit in the base of the transistor. So you rub this off then you draw the LC circuit here. So this is C, this is L here. Now for the inductive coupling, this is a common core. So when you draw a small coil here, you connect it to the collector of the transistor. Clear? Output we take from here. In this circuit, we take the output from here. Clear? See, this tune circuit is connected to the base of the transistor, so this is called tune base. This produces an oscillation like before. Through this, it gets the feedback. So, this was the topic for today.